Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we've got something really new, interesting, and unique. So what is this? Well, let's read it. So this was sent to me via email. A victim received a DM from someone, and as we can see, they're a mutual of the Arch Linux server, with a Russian username saying, Hello. I have to notify Linux users about a very big danger. Repositories of Arch, Debian, and Ubuntu were hacked several days ago. They have already been fixed, but your system may already be hacked. Now, this is fake. Although, especially with the AUR, there is a genuine risk of malware on Linux. Don't be fooled. There is. Uh, and Linux doesn't have great app-level security controls. But this is a fake alert. Strongly recommend you check your system by special tool. Just download and run this program which checks your system for malware and prints results to console. Well, to be fair, that does happen, as you're about to see. I'm going to show you a sandbox run of this, and then we'll go over some static analysis I've done to sort of explain what each of these pieces do. So if you do download this on a Linux system, the result will look something like this. Now we'll go through the replay, and then we execute it. Now, if you executed it in the terminal, which is the intended way, you would see the output of the CLI. But I didn't do that, so we just see I ran this program. Uh, to be clear, it's not an EFI malware. Uh, the person who submitted it sent it to me, and it got that. And we can see that it calls this application. Then it drops itself to its PID in temp. Then it replaces itself with the second stage, which is the real... Uh, payload, which is a reverse shell. So it gets its second stage from git t. Now let's take a look at what's going on here. So we've got two different payloads. Now these are encrypted. Load files and slash, okay. And we can actually go through the commits, and there it seems like then they're swapping this out as their C2 servers are getting shut down. Would be kind of interesting. Let's just see if any of these comments are... No, they're not. Uh, they're not um, anything super interesting. Now these are encrypted, and the dropper contains a method to decrypt them, and then it simply executes the malware. Now given this file is bigger, I am just wondering if this is just the stage one. Just mainly just checking to see if this is even a valid L. It doesn't match, because I've already uploaded the stage one, so this could be a different stage one. And we'll go back through. That then initiates a reverse C2, and if we go on over to connections, uh, we can see this. Uh, and we can see some TCP activity through uh, the sandbox logging it. This is the download, and then we get, yeah, we get no data on this one. I could check our previous run just to see if we do, but I do have, okay, it doesn't get, it doesn't do anything so far. I do have static analysis, though, where I can show you some more. Okay, so this is text, apparently. Let's just try, okay, we can try open it with Notepad. I think it might be too big for Notepad. Well, that's not our main mission, so let's go on over and explain how this all kind of works. So first of all, I'll take you to the dropper. This is the entry point of the drop function. This is called from the start function, but if we look a bit closer, uh, we can see, so there's this, which just is uh, some basic checks, and then we've got uh, this. Now, this isn't usually how there's a couple of stuff that's being skipped, and then the rest of this file is just being packed with many megabytes of garbage. We've got a loop that goes through and sort of attempts to get that. Then we have this, which will move the PID into EAX, which is used to write out the file from here. Uh, this is just bad decompilation. Uh, so we get that. And ultimately, a downloaded file is then executed. Uh, now, if this function, which tests internet, doesn't work, uh, we get an error message saying that to run the fake scan, uh, we need to an internet connection. Now, what's interesting is despite this being a two-stager, both are clearly dedicated to this campaign and are consistent. So we're through uh, everything interesting in this sample, so now I'm going to move you on to stage two. Uh, if you ever watched Onage Pranks, we're going to stage two. Now, this entry point creates a TCP socket, connects to this. Now, ngrok is essentially an online API gateway, so this is simply being used to mask where the C2 is actually living. You can just set up your TCP API on this platform, uh, and behind that, in this case, is a C2 server. Now, here, 
this will be shown to the user making them think that everything is legit, we're all good, checks for palace, no security vulnerabilities were found. So at this point you think, okay, good, it was a real antivirus, nothing bad has happened. But what you're not realizing is your computer is now essentially ratted. So we're connected to the reverse TCP here, and then we can see some more. And then we can see the important part. And here we're simply going to execute the shell through this. We've now got a reverse shell running. The system has been pwned at this point. Now we get through these, and then these will route to syscalls. Now from a few sandbox runs I've done so far, I haven't actually seen anything hit. That could mean that something is dead. It also could just mean that they simply didn't have any commands for us yet. It might wait a while. Now from a per cursory glance at this, there's no indication that this is persistent. It doesn't create any cron jobs. So what may be going on here is that given enough time, the reverse shell would eventually create uh, persistence or do whatever else they want. I mean, it's functionally, until you reboot your computer, this is a rat. And because on Linux, the terminal is much more powerful, this is a bigger threat than it would be if you had a reverse shell on Windows. This is probably, in my personal experience, the first time I've seen desktop malware targeting a desktop Linux user. It doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but this is seems like it is starting to pick up. And that could be a concern with how the Arch user repository works, which of course, what people may not know, I saw someone actually talking about how great the AUR is, and I agree, but you'd have to be careful. User-generated content, right? I can just make an account in here and upload anything I want. And there's no strict verification. Unlike the main repositories, which were not compromised, that's a potential method. And on any operating system, if someone on Discord sends you an executable file, unless you really know this person, know they're not hacked, uh, don't run it. If you ever receive a message like this one with fake urgency, or any form of urgency telling you to run something or enter your password, don't fall for it. That's a psychological manipulation tactic. It's not real. And as a general rule of safety, you may even just want to turn off random DMs on Discord. You can make it so that people can't just DM you because you have a mutual friend. General word of safety here. If you receive a DM from a random person in a server you're in, especially a tech-related server, don't trust it. If you haven't already in the server had contact with them and this is someone you want to be friends with, you're probably just falling victim to a scam. So that's going to be all for me for now. Please do let me know what you thought in the comments below. Don't be downloading this sketchy malware. And do remember, just because you're on Linux doesn't mean you're not at risk for malware. That's all for me for now. Bye.